So we just finished uh, with a little bit of background on airborne sensors. So now let's talk a bit about contact sensors. How do they work? Well, first we're gonna talk about the contact probe itself. So a contact sensor is designed to pick up structure-borne ultrasound. And this is a style of sensor that's used for testing things like uh, bearings, motors, gearboxes, valves, seam traps, um, listening behind sealed doors for electric in you know, electrical cabinets, those sorts of things. And uh, typically there's two types of sensors. One is a needle sensor, um, which is just a pointed device at the end of a, uh, a sensor package. And the other is a non-handheld or threaded or magnetic type sensors. So as you see here, uh, magnetic, uh, I'm sorry, uh, contact probes, um, they can be handheld needle type contact probes. And most manufacturers that provide contact probes allow you to add length or have different lengths in those contact probes. Uh, this could be great if you are, um, you don't wanna get too close because there's a lot of rotating equipment or something that you can't get uh, safely um, very close. Um, you could use a contact sensor to get it. It's also good for rapid readings. Um, on the non-handheld side, uh, there's different types of um, threaded sensors. So there might be um, locations on equipment that already have mounting pads where you can thread a, uh, a contact sensor onto it directly. And there's also magnetic mounts, which are great. Uh, if you can uh, mark the equipment that you're going to read from to where exactly that magnetic sensor attaches, um, you get much more repeatable data. So again, the needle sensors are great for speedy checks, for quick checks. And when the measurement point is um, really difficult to access and you might be able to do it from a distance. Um, don't use a needle for a measurement for longer than 10 seconds. So it's really hard. One of the things, uh, ultrasound is directional, whether it's in air or whether it's structure borne. And so when you put a needle sensor on, you wanna make sure that the angle is, is the same every time you do it. And the amount of pressure that you're putting on from the handheld device through the needle sensor, that amount of pressure that you put on needs to be constant too. Um, and it's really hard to do that with a needle sensor. Um, so try to limit the data collection to 10 seconds or less. Um, the positioning of the sensor is really critical, right? So if we're trying to listen to a bearing, we wanna be right at the bearing housing at a 90 degree angle so that we're getting the maximum amount of sound uh, transmission through the structure into the needle sensor. So we, we want to be able to reproduce the same amount of force we're putting on the needle um, because that can affect uh, how, the, how good the sound quality is being picked up by the sensor. And the needle, uh, as I said, should be perpendicular to the surface. And so it's really best to use magnets or threaded sensors if, if it's safe to do that. Um, it's also great, those are also great for slow speed machines that require longer acquisition times. And when you have a bunch of different people that are collecting data, um, we, if you use magnets or threaded connections, it makes it more repeatable makes it easier for different people to, to collect the same data.